Hello, today we're going to be talking about the Deadly Assassin. The Doctor's received the summons from Gallifrey, so he can't take Sarah Jane. So he's going to take Sarah Jane back to Earth. And he drops her off there. And then, en route to Gallifrey, he has a vision of the president of Gallifrey being assassinated. So after that vision, the Doctor falls down, uh, has a little bit of a, a rest. No, he doesn't. He's not resting. Uh, when he comes to, the TARDIS arrives at Gallifrey, and the Citadel guards come to investigate the appearance of a time capsule. Now, you can see the problem that happens here. There's a special effect problem. The scanner screen has... We've, there's some chroma key on the scanner screen, uh, and the, the camera inside the TARDIS is swinging around to look at that screen, but the imagery that they're putting onto that chroma key is actually from a camera that hasn't moved. So the viewer can see that the the camera hasn't moved and, and the imagery is actually static with respect to the television screen that the viewer is watching, that the audience is watching. So, of course, being Dr. Howe, I've got to fix that. So how do we do that? Well, if the imagery that was in that scanner screen happened to be a rectangle that was completely horizontal, then we could fix it by shifting the pixels sideways. We could actually just take a rectangle and move it sideways and then fill it in with another rectangle taken from another frame of uh, footage, perhaps. But unfortunately, that doesn't work because the scanner screen is actually not an exact rectangle. The chroma key section is a polygon. Uh, it's not quite horizontal. So I actually, to help myself, I made a little program uh, which lets me firstly select the edges of the polygon that needs to be uh, reverse chroma keyed, if you will. And what we're going to do is actually take the pixels from the same frame, move, shift them across, but you'll end up with a bit of a gap around the edge, and those pixels we're going, actually going to take from the next frame. So now this, is, this could be done with something like GIMP, but it's a little bit fiddly, so I've done it with a computer program just to keep track of which pixels I've filled in and which ones I haven't. And now look, if you look through here, you can see that the result isn't perfect. Um, but look, there comes a point when there's a trade-off between how much effort you're willing to put in and what you consider good enough. And I think what we've reached here is a good enough point because when you actually see it in real time, when you actually play it in real time, you can see that it works quite well. Now, that's the first special effect that I wanted to fix. And there's another one, which is the dematerialization of the Master's TARDIS. And I'll show you that now. Now, if you have a look at the Master's TARDIS dematerializing, you can see the problem. We've got the Master's face here. I mean, what was the director thinking? So, you know, we might as well have, I don't know, a lolcat there or something. Uh, it doesn't look right. It's got to be fixed. So what are we going to, to do? So. In order to fix this, uh, what we need to do is get a clean shot, a before shot, where the TARDIS is just sitting there, and an after shot, which actually has a blank wall. Unfortunately, we've got both of those shots. In fact, there's many frames before and a couple of frames after where the TARDIS is completely dematerialized. So once we've got those two shots, we need to just correct them by shifting uh, the pixels down a little bit, across a little bit, to make the alignment correct. Uh, fixing that edge there, which actually looks wrong, changing the color of the black. Actually, the blacks in the shadows there actually aren't quite right. And once we once we basically fix those problems, we can then do a clean crossfade between the two shots. And that will actually produce a nice, clean dematerialization effect. And as, as you can see, I think that looks a lot better. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Howe. Goodbye.